So this is a herg that I built for Eostra, which is the same root word as Ostara and Easter. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Frith. So I want to introduce a concept that I haven't talked about on this channel, and that is the concept of frith. And frith is, it's kind of the heathen version of the golden rule. It is essentially the concept of reciprocal respect and inviability. Now, most non-heathens are unaware of the concept of frith, despite how useful it is, really, and despite how people generally intuit the concept. So while there is an understanding that this old view of Frith was mainly circled around physical harm, basically, you know, you don't stab me, I won't stab you. It can be intuitively applied in other forms of harm, and was likely applied in this sense anyway. So, Frith is often translated as the word peace, but a modern definition of Frith might be that it's a mutual agreement to avoid causing each other physical, emotional, or mental harm, and to avoid negatively affecting each other's honor, worth, or luck. And it could also be applied in a sense of a security or peace between people. So breaking frith in a home would be violating that security or peace. And it's up to you who you believe you can establish this agreement with. And sometimes it's just a simple conversation where you believe that there's mutual trust. It's up to you on how you kind of approach this. Maybe you've, maybe in thinking about this definition, you've realized, hey, frith is being violated in my home. And you can approach it. Uh, maybe there's certain people in your life that, you know, a frith bond isn't worth trying to make the effort on. Uh, in other cases, sometimes, like, somebody who, uh, even if you're non-heathen, or if the if the, someone you're trying to establish frith with is non-heathen, you can introduce the concept and be like, hey, you know, this is, this is how, this is an old concept that I think is pretty useful. Let's apply it. And this can, and should, if you're going to do it, be applied in a solution-oriented way. And being solution-oriented, uh, you should be committed to finding and building that mutual trust, because when it comes right down to it, that's what Frith is. Now, I'm in a lucky situation. There isn't much uh, risk of Frith breaking in my family. Most of my family is Southern Baptist, which, <laughs> as some of you might be familiar, might have some certain expectations, a certain reputation about it, but uh, in honestly, in being open in my life about being pagan, there hasn't been too much of an issue. In my family, holidays are about spending time together, not fighting. And so whatever disagreements might exist, are they're put aside. And we all sit down and we stuff our faces full of food and we laugh together. But I know a lot of families aren't like that, especially for pagans. I am a pagan in the South, and just about every pagan that I know either has to hide their religion from their family, or they have to deal with one or two choice family members that create difficulty over faith. And this is one of the things that polytheists and atheists have similar experiences with. Uh, and we can learn from one another, honestly. And I think that the concept of frith is worth applying here, even if we're not explaining it, because even if you're not explaining it, a lot of people get it. So one thing to keep in mind, in addition to that, is that if you're not the host, you're in their hearth. So frith is on their terms. If the host is Christian, you will have Christian celebrations. If the host is pagan, then the celebrations may be pagan. But there's no reason for a pagan to, to demand that there be no Christian celebration from a Christian host. And there's no reason for a Christian to demand that there be no pagan celebrations from a pagan host. And there you go. Uh, but for me, there, there hasn't, like, in my experiences with going to another hearth, uh, there isn't a huge risk <laughs> in joining my Christian family in prayer. I don't lead it. I don't think it's my place to lead it, So, uh, but I join. Uh, I've gone to church a few times. I don't really have an issue with going. I just don't do the whole communion thing. There's a meaning behind that ritual that just doesn't really apply to me, so I don't do it. If you have concerns about going home for any holiday, here's a couple of ideas on how to approach it, and we can take the concept of frith and sort of apply it. 
And the first way of applying this is to have an open conversation prior. State your concerns from a position of safety, like a phone call or an email. Phone call's better because you get that voice inflection, but you know, it gives them a chance to respond with love. You could maybe mention that, hey, you know, Aunt Becky's a little hard on the dinner table evangelism, or Uncle Joe's loud atheism is a little overbearing. Um, it's not the greatest thing. It's not making it's it's not conducive to the peace of this family celebration. How about we find a way to solve that? And remember, it's their hearth. So don't be the one to let religion get in the way unless it's just being practiced in a way that you find to be abusive. If there's things that you're uncomfortable with, you know, speak up. Um, and all things being normal, this is completely reasonable and a good way to lay the groundwork for the issue. And if this conversation doesn't work out, if you wind up being met with like a lot of pushback, like an unreasonable amount, uh, then maybe there's not a huge reason to go home on this particular holiday. It's, you know, maybe you can just chill. Uh, but this is a good way of approaching the issue in a way that's productive, saying, hey, we're a family. Let's respect each other. Let's make this work. That leads into the next thing that I want to talk about, which is to set your boundaries. Feel free to talk things through and answer questions that are in good faith if you want. And a lot of times that can be helpful to building that mutual trust because it gives your family a chance to get to know you and understand you. But your boundaries are yours. Be clear about them. If you don't want to play 20 questions, you're within your rights on that. And you can set that boundary. And if things get contentious, state, hey, I don't want to fight. You're not here to fight. And you can disengage. And that's keeping frith. And if they pursue the matter, it's them that's breaking frith. One way to manage this is to change the topic completely and just say, you know, hey, how's your job going? Or, hey, your kids are doing baseball. How's that going? It gives them an opportunity to reframe the conversation. And occasionally there's a realization that a line was crossed and things get dropped and people move on. And lastly, don't start shit. We're not an evangelical religion. Converting people is of little consequence to us. People either agree or they don't. So there's no reason for us to fire first. I've heard a lot of stories, mainly with atheists, of, of people doing something sacrilegious or forcing debate around issues with family. And if anything is breaking frith, it's that. It's destructive and it doesn't contribute to building trust with family. So there's really no reason to do it. The last piece of advice that I'd give is control your exit. And this applies to any uncomfortable situation. You know, maybe have a friend on call or bring your car. And, you know, this changes depending on environment or what you have access to. But the bottom line is control your exit. Be able to get out if you need to. Especially if you think that if you have any reasonable suspicion that something is going to happen in which you're going to need to just kind of bid farewell and... Uh, hey, this, you know, we tried, it didn't work, I'm going to take off. And there's no need to make a scene out of it. And just be like, well, uh, I made my concerns known. Uh, I've attempted to make things work. Things didn't work. I bid you farewell. You know, that's the last resort. It's not something that you want to do. It's not something that you... It's not the desired outcome. <laughs> Put it that way. But sometimes you need to do it. And sometimes doing that will get you the respect that's needed for next time to work better. And, you know, Frith applies here because it's, Frith is not dependent on belief. It's dependent on good intentions between humans. And people of different religious backgrounds can have good intentions toward each other. And it's important to remember that. So that's my video on Frith and family. I hope you learned something and maybe helped you out. I've got uh, more stuff in the works, some of which is going to be pretty fun. So hit the subscribe button and uh, ring the bell.